Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel, Canada Immigration. We hope you're doing great. In this video, we're going to talk about whether Canada announces changes to the temporary foreign worker program to better address labor market needs. In response to evolving labor market demands and the changing landscape of employment, Canada has announced significant changes to its temporary foreign worker program. Designed to ensure that employers can access the skilled workers they need while protecting the rights of both foreign workers and Canadian citizens, these reforms mark a crucial step towards fostering a more responsive and adaptable immigration system. By aligning the program with emerging industry needs and strengthening protections for workers, Canada seeks to enhance its competitiveness on the global stage while upholding its commitment to fairness and inclusivity. If you are interested in this topic, so, to get all the information, pay attention and watch the video through to the end please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to push the notification bell for an upcoming video. So, without any further delay, let's jump into the video. Immigration Minister Mark Miller and Employment Minister Randy Boysenolt have announced changes to Canada's Temporary Foreign Worker Program DFWP. During the pandemic, Canada unleashed a series of temporary measures to help ease labor market conditions. Now, however, Canada has begun to undo these temporary measures. Um, hello, bonjour. I first want to start by acknowledging our presence on the traditional and ceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. I would like to thank my colleague Rani Boissonneau, who is here with me today. Canada has a world-class and well-managed immigration system, but there is always more that we can do to support successful immigration to Canada, and notably ensure that those who choose to make this their home are set up for success. As I said this fall when I tabled our levels plan for the next three years, immigration accounts for the vast majority of our population and the labor force growth. Grâce à l'immigration, le Canada continue d'attirer des travailleurs qualifiés dont il a besoin pour soutenir soutenir une croissance, la croissance, réunir les familles, tout en maintenant nos traditions humanitaires. Le nouveau programme dédié aux régions rurales du Nord et de l'Atlantique contribue à la croissance de ces économies et de ces communautés, comme j'ai déjà pu notamment le constater lors de ma visite dans le nord de l'Ontario au début du mois. Et notre politique d'immigration francophone contribue à rétablir le poids démographique des communautés linguistiques minoritaires francophones à l'extérieur du Québec. At the same time, we've heard from Canadians, um, a wide range of civil society leaders and economists, uh, and, we've heard, and, we, and we've listened. Uh, Canada has seen a sharp increase in the volume of temporary residents in recent years, from a rise of international students to more foreign workers filling job vacancies to those fleeing wars and natural disasters. To be clear, from the start, temporary residents enrich Canada's economic, social, and cultural fabric. Canada's future economic vibrancy depends on those we bring in today, whether we like that or not. Today, Canada's labour market is recovering, pretty much has recovered from the pandemic, and employers are experiencing less difficulty filling jobs. And Canada, by all accounts, has done a singularly good job compared to its peers in making the workplace and workforce younger. And while many temporary foreign workers are filling the needed job vacancies in critical industries like construction workers and will be needed for the future for that, uh, to build new homes, for early childhood educators to teach our kids and healthcare professionals to treat patients. However, changes are needed to make the system more efficient and more sustainable. To understand what solutions we Overall, need to implement, first, we need to understand how we got here. Umbrella term for a large en gros, l'expression résidente temporaire est un générique pour un grand nombre de voies d'accès et de programmes gérés par IRCC. Voici quelques catégories. 42 percent sont des étudiants étrangers, 9 percent sont des étrangers temporaires, et ceci s'inscrit dans le programme de travail étranger pour les employeurs de l'international mobility program. Further specifics, such as those postgraduate work permits, spousal work permits, uh, student workers, students or workers, and those who are temporarily visiting Canada under youth mobility visas, as well as workers arriving through intercompany transfers or arrivals from special humanitarian 
et ceux qui arrivent par le biais de transferts interentreprises, ceux qui arrivent par des voies humanitaires spéciales, 26% de titulaires de permis de travail post-diplôme, 9% de conjoints d'étudiants, 10% de participants à des programmes d'échange réciproque de jeunes qui permettent à leur tour à des jeunes canadiens de travailler dans d'autres pays, 12% de conjoints de travail qualifiés, 26% d'arrivals, ce qui est croissant, par le programmes comme QIT et d'autres programmes tels que la VQ et d'autres voies humanitaires spéciales. Et enfin, 17% pour les transferts entre entreprises, les accords commerciaux, etc. Examinons donc, examinons donc ceci en, en détail. On the workers' front, it is important to acknowledge that the pandemic left labor shortages in almost every sector of the Canadian economy. Provinces and businesses need us to bring more workers to the shortages. Provinces and businesses need us to bring more workers to the shortages. Provinces and businesses need us to bring more workers to the shortages. Provinces and businesses need us to bring more workers to the shortages. We used all the tools at our disposal to prevent a breakdown in the economy. And we were very successful in that recovery. Employment is at 1.2 million jobs above pre-COVID numbers of February 2020. And the unemployment rate is at 5.8% of February 2024. As such, we've more than recovered all the jobs lost during COVID and now at 138% of that number. As it concerns the students, entre autres, le financement chronique de l'enseignement postsecondaire et des acteurs plus, plus scrupuleux qui cherchent à tirer les profits des personnes vulnérables ont entraîné une croissance exponentielle du nombre d'étudiants internationaux à travers le Canada. Ce qui a eu des répercussions significatives sur les permis de travail de troisième cycle et les permis de travail ouverts pour les étudiants et les étudiants. Confrontés à des niveaux sans précédent de conflits, de versement économique et politique, de violations de droits de l'homme et de changements climatiques, nous continuons à avoir un nombre record de personnes déplacées. Le recours croissant des politiques publiques temporaires pour soutenir les réponses du gouvernement à ces crises que les Canadiens attendent à juste titre contribue à la croissance que je viens de nommer. For example, as part of our response exemple, to Ukraine, we will have close to 300,000 arrivals in Ukraine in Canada by the end of the month. To be clear, these are important global Canadians, and Canadians should unabashedly be proud of this. At the same time, there should be an honest conversation about what the rise in national migration means for Canada as we plan for Canada. Finally, we can't ignore the pressures created by the struggle of asylum seekers in Canada consistent with worldwide trends, and ensuring a well-resourced system that can quickly and fairly process asylum claims is critical to manage the volume of temporary residents. À mesure que les conditions mondiales changent, que notre marché du travail se resserre et que le type de compétences que nous recherchons par notre futur main d'œuvre évolue, nos politiques doivent-elles aussi évoluer. Nous devons être plus stratégiques dans la, matière, dans la manière dont nous évaluons la demande des étudiants internationaux et des travailleurs étrangers temporaires que nous accueillons dans le pays. Nous devons veiller à ce que le nombre de résidents temporaires entrant dans le pays se situe à un niveau durable, tout en respectant nos engagements humanitaires et en soutenant les priorités de notre marché de travail. The question is, what have we done so far? And the good news is, because there is some, we've already taken some big strides forward. On this front, earlier this year, as you may recall, we imposed a two-year cap for new international students to address integrity issues in that program. We also restricted eligibility for postgraduate work permits and work permits to spouses and students. Recently, as well, we announced a partial visa requirement for Mexican travelers. As we continue to see the impacts of these measures over the next few years, we'll continue to adjust those approaches as well if necessary. Dans les prochaines années. What's next? Pour poursuivre le, tra le travail étapes, et assurer une croissance durable à l'avenir, nos programmes d'accueil des résidences temporaires doivent refléter les besoins et l'évolution des demandes du marché du travail. To that end, I've directed my department to conduct a review of existing programs that bring in temporary workers, and we're undertaking work to better align the streams of labor market needs and weed out abuses in the system. We'll be working closely with along my colleague, Minister Boisson, on those streams that fall under the temporary foreign worker program. At the same time, we must ensure that robust pathways to permanent residencies for those who wish to make Canada their home in the long term and avoid the pitfalls of an economy that is built solely on temporary workers. This means not only setting targets for the number of permanent residents to be welcome, but also setting targets for temporary residents. So starting this, for this, this fall, for the first time, we will expand the immigration levels plan to include both temporary resident arrivals and permanent resident arrivals. The latter category is something that you know we're doing already. Ça permettra de renforcer l'alignement entre la planification de l'immigration, les capacités communautaires et les besoins du marché du, tra du travail et de soutenir une croissance démographique qui est-elle prévisible. To set these targets, 
I'll be convening a meeting with my provincial and territorial counterparts, as well as other relevant ministers in Arima. Provinces and territories know their unique labor needs and capacity and need to assume responsibility for the people that they bring in as well. This will be an opportunity for us to come together as partners to develop plans in realigning our temporary worker streams and bringing the people we need to build homes that we are short of, healthcare workers that we need to ensure those hospitals are properly staffed and early childhood educators we need to ensure that we can work. We recognize completely that this can only work if this can only happen with the input of the provinces and territories and their knowledge of their capacities to provide vital social services to growing communities. On the other hand, the provincial nominee program provides provinces and territories with an opportunity to address their specific economic needs while distributing the benefits of economic immigration and nominating individuals for permanent residency. As part of our efforts for temporary residence, the transition to permanent residency We'll have more domestic jobs for us with the feds and ask provinces and territories taking part in the provincial nominee program to do the same with their allocations. This will realign our efforts and provide a pathway for those who are in the country who wish to stay and contribute to the country and the economy. Recently, Canada's temporary resident volume has increased significantly, now reaching up to 2.5 million or 6.2 percent of our population in 2023. Therefore, in our levels planning, we'll be including a target in order to reach an adequate volume of temporary residents that we can welcome. As a starting point, we're targeting a decrease in our temporary residents' population to 5 percent over the next three years. This target will be, of course, finalized in the fall after consulting our provincial and territorial counterparts as part of our annual levels plan. Au fur et à mesure que je poursuivrai ces conversations avec d'autres niveaux de gouvernement, mes collègues du cabinet, des chefs d'entreprise, des fournisseurs de services, des établissements, je continuerai à informer les Canadiens des progrès accomplis pour faire face à cette situation fort complexe. Toutefois, s'il y a une chose à retenir de ces commentaires aujourd'hui, c'est bien celle-ci. Canada will continue to benefit from the important contributions the Canada continues to benefit from the contributions of the new new family residents to be set up for the success and be able to access the services that they need. Our ultimate goal is to ensure a well-managed, sustainable immigration system built on needs rather than profitability or the cost of integrity and sustainability. We are now in a different economic picture with a gap between unemployment and job vacancies closing and a tightening labor market some of these measures are no longer needed said Minister Boys on Alt. The TFWP was designed to issue work permits to foreign nationals who can help fill labor market gaps in Canada businesses in Canada that wish to hire foreign nationals through the TFWP must support their application with a labor market impact assessment LMIA, that demonstrates there were no qualified Canadians or permanent residents to fill the role. During the pandemic, to help ease labor market conditions, Canada temporarily increased the validity period of an LMIA to 12 months as of May 1, 2024. The validity period of an LMIA will now return to six months. Note that employers part of the recognized employer pilot program will not be impacted by this change. Low wage workers who applied through the DFWP must comprise no more than 20% of a Canadian business workforce in 2022. As a temporary measure and only for certain sectors, Canada increased the cap to 30%. As of May 1, 2024, only the construction and healthcare sectors will be allowed to have up to 30% of their workforce on low-wage TFWP work permits. Note that the cap exemption for the agriculture sector and seasonal employers will remain unchanged. These changes come as Canada is attempting to strengthen the integrity of its immigration system, which plays a central role in Canada's economy. Canada has recently announced a cap on study permits and changes to its post-graduation work permit (PGWP) program in response to a rapid and unsustainable increase in international students. Recently Canada's temporary resident volume has increased significantly now reaching up to 2.5 million, or 6.2% of our population in 2023. We are targeting a decrease in our temporary resident population to 5% over the next three years, said Immigration Minister Mark Miller. We want every new family and resident to be set up for success and be able to access the services they need. Our ultimate goal is to ensure a well-managed, sustainable immigration system based on needs. As Canada unveils these changes to the temporary foreign worker program, it reaffirms its dedication to fostering a dynamic and inclusive workforce that can meet the challenges of the 21st century economy. By striking a balance between the needs of employers and the rights of workers, these reforms pave the way for a more resilient and equitable labor market. 
As the nation continues to navigate the complexities of immigration policy, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to building a society where opportunity knows no bounds and where every individual has the chance to thrive and contribute to the rich tapestry of Canadian life. That is all for today, in this video. What are your thoughts on this? Please let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the entire video. Hopefully, the information is useful to you. See you later, in the next episode. Till then, take care.